One of the things I want to raise is uh, my father's mother. I know we're coming in till, uh, what now, 34 years. Uh, well, we are into 34 years, we've been to 35 years this year. Um, it has come to my attention, and what I'm going to do here is name a few individuals who we have always suspected of being involved. And we've given the security force every opportunity to arrest them, but they've made no uh, they've made no play to do anything about it. Now they're also looking at it from a bigger picture, which we hope will uh, finally get movement on on an overall like uh, serial killers type uh, investigation, which is going on at the minute. But the farmyard that my father worked on belonged to a man called Joe Watson. Now, it's only lately, although I'd heard it before, but it's only lately that I've actually went and spoken to a number of people who knew Joe Watson very well. And right up until Joe's deathbed, Joe Watson said that one of the men that were there, or was there at the shooting of my father, was a man called PJ. Now, I know the rest of the name. Um, I've given it to the police and I'm asking the police to investigate it. Now PJ, if, if it's not you, and there's only a few PJ people in that area who know, have a fair idea who I would be talking about, I'd like you to come forward uh, to the family or to the police and clear your name. Because Joe Watson, right onto his deathbed, said that you were there the night my father was shot. And another name that was mentioned was a McCarnold as well, which wasn't mentioned by Joe Watson, was mentioned by somebody else. Um, now, McCarnold was arrested not that long after it and let out again. Uh, again, I don't know, I'm not so sure about him. But another name that's mentioned is a boy Lavelle, who has been on the run for quite a few years, was involved in killing quite a few people in that area, and uh, he's been wanted for something like 30 years by the security forces. Now he was another name that was mentioned at my father's shooting. There was another boy, uh, Hertie, was also mentioned as being involved in my father's murder. Um, and then, of course, we had the man who let them out of the car down the road, um, which was also involved in taking McParnell away from the shooting at the Mountain House where they ambushed the army, uh, although the army was ready for them. And they ended up, uh, it was four of them, well, one was shot, but he was taken away by another uh, so-called local member of the community uh, and taken to a hospital across the border. Uh, of course then he disappeared from the hospital but that was the same fellow who let the gunman out of the car. He was seen as well that day. Now we've been pushing but we are going to push now because the man had known this man all his life. Joe Watson may have been old but he was not stupid. He knew the voice and he swore until his deathbed that the man that shot Bertie Fraser or the man that was there at the shooting of Bertie Fraser and the words he said to Joe was go back into the house Joe and you'll be alright while they were shooting or sorry they just shot my father at that stage Joe Watson said that voice he had heard it every day of the week because it was a neighbour there was a man called PJ. That's not me saying it. And I have spoken to a number of people who said, yes, Joe told them that as well. He always said that. But unfortunately, because of the security situation and the threat of opening your mouth in that part of the country, you'd end up dead. Well, I'm opening my mouth. 
because if I had knew this 20 years ago or 10 years ago, I'd open my mouth. If I knew 30 years ago, I'd open my mouth. But I know it now, and I've had it confirmed. I say we heard it a number of occasions, but I've never really sat down and uh, investigated it. Now we have, and we've heard it from several people. That Joe Watson, who witnessed the shooting, said the man that told him to go back into the house, he'd heard the voice every day of his life, and he recognised it. And he said it was a man called PJ. Now PJ, you know who I'm talking about. If it's you, well, the police is going to catch up with you sooner or later, or justice will catch up with you sooner or later, whatever way you want to put it. Um, but it was not you. Come forward then. And explain why Joe thought it was you. Because Joe Watson had no grievance against anybody. And that's well known when the country said Joe Watson had no grievance for anybody. But he did make it quite clear. And I have now spoken to a number of the people that he made it clear to. And he always said it, right up until he died, the man that shot Bertie Fraser the man that was there at the shooting of Bertie Fraser was a man that he had heard or spoke to most days of his life. It was a man called PJ. Now, there's also the Hardy thing and the Lavelle thing. Uh, them men have been on the run for years. And not only my father's murder are the looking about them for, but also quite a few other murders as well in the area. So they come as no surprise. But we're going to start naming these people now, publicly, because it seems to be that uh, people think that nobody knows who these people are. Well, we do. It's now time that the police or the HET and them took action. Here's a man who had told a number of people, and it's not the first person who's been convicted on the word of somebody saying they recognised the voice, even though they were in a hood. People have been convicted because they knew the voice that well, that they were able to uh, identify the person. And men have been convicted and went to jail. It's unfortunate it's taken this length of time, but again, I suppose people didn't want us knowing the name of this individual because for some reason or another they thought uh, we would go to his door, which I probably would have had. Uh, but we're giving him the opportunity now to come to us or go to the police and clear his name. The ball is in your court, but I'm telling you now, you need to go to somebody or come to somebody because if not, we'll take a civil action again. You and that old farmer land of yours, I don't know what it's worth. It's a civil action, I'm sure. Worth a few pounds, we can donate it to charity or something. I don't know, it's just to let you know I haven't forgot about you.